Okay. Now, I think one thing we- one good thing to start off with, and it's actually one thing that, uh, EasyScape, like, um, like talked about on his, uh, YouTube channel once before, um, uh, Mr. Krabs overdoses on ketamine on, like, not being on Spear.com. Do you think that's a good thing to start off with? Uh, sure, let's go. Fill me in on the details on that one, because I'm not 100% sure, uh... To my knowledge, no. um, well, the game has a huge, a very huge, uh, community with life for it right now, and the mods on Spear.com, um to my knowledge, is not accepting the game due to it, I guess, because of the, uh, like, drug thing, like, the whole drug thing in the game. Mm -hmm. And so many people have done so many posts, like, complaining and requesting, the mo like, to the mods that they bring it, like, onto the site. And the answer's been no? Yep. Well... Considering, in my personal opinion, the game is, like, it is definitely very popular, and I know usually, uh, most of the time, Spear.com mods don't exactly post or accept the game unless, not when it comes to popularity, but when it comes to notability. Right. The way I see the game, I, it's definitely notable, like, in terms of, like, I guess in their eyes and all. I believe it should be on speedrun.com as well. Like, there's lots of other weird games and all that shows off drugs and even, like, very bad NSFW games, too, that I would say is much worse. Well, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> and, yeah, and, uh, I know they said that their, um, uh, restrictions was not as strict back then. But I personally feel like they should still add it to the site. What about you? What do you think the, about all that? Uh, is it a fan-made game? Like I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about the game, so uh, I'm gonna have a lot of questions here. Is is it a is it a mod for SpongeBob game? Uh, no, sir. It is a fan-made game, and the okay. the point of it is where um you go around collecting bottles of ketamine, like giving it like to some of the characters, like in okay. like in the game, like SpongeBob and Patrick. And then right. you have to go and like fight Plankton, like at, like go to Plankton, like afterwards he asks a question, and then the game ends there. It's been I strange. mean, like, <laughs> so it's fan made. I don't know. That's it's it's an interesting question because there's there are things like Pico School on Speedrun.com, which is a flash game made by Tom Fulp, uh back in 1999 that that deals with some pretty heavy stuff. Um, I know you try to keep things pretty uh, PG thirteen on on stream, so I won't uh, I won't go into what that game's about, but it deals with some pretty heavy stuff. Uh, it's like just in that regard, like maybe it should be maybe it should be uh, on the on the the speedrun .com, but like at the same time, I don't I don't really know like the full criteria of of what the mods use to decide what belongs on speedrun .com. Um I remember I run a game called. Uh, Skull the Hero Slayer, and when that was in early access, I submitted it for a leaderboard, and they said no. And it was it was pretty much a full game then. Uh, and there was a, there wasn't too much added to it after it went live. That, and then they finally said it was end of early access. You guys can have a leaderboard now. So I don't I don't know the full criteria there for what they do or what what the mods do, like the super mods, I guess, because it's not really mods. It's the super mods of Speedrun.com. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know if they have criteria that they have to like. A little checkbox where they're checking things off to see, like, okay, made by a big game company, uh, has some notoriety, and that sort of thing. I don't know what their criteria is, or if it's just mm -hmm, maybe we don't want a game where you're overdosing on drugs on the on the uh, the leaderboard. Because hey, uh, you could do that in Grand Theft Auto, um, but there's also a lot of other stuff you can do in Grand Theft Auto. That's that's not the goal of Grand Theft Auto to overdose on drugs. But now, having said that, I'm sure someone's going to do a overdose on drug speedrun of grand theft auto 5 so um it's 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 an interesting question should it be on there i don't know like speedrun.com seems to want to operate as this we want every leaderboard for every game on our website um but there are some communities that hold out against that like mario kart 64 
most actually pretty much any Mario Kart game is all on the Mario Kart website, uh, which is all fan made. I think William Lacey made that originally, and Kevin Booth went in. I think Abby runs most of it now. So uh, there's uh, there's a lot of like, and then you have like the Donkey Kong series, which recently just moved over to Speedrun.com, and then the Mega Man series, which do not use Speedrun.com at all. It's rarely updated. They use the Mega Man leaderboards website. Uh, and speeder.com just seems to not care what they what those communities want and just keep updating their leaderboards anyway um so it's it, it's like a hit or miss it's like i don't know if, if you're asking me if it should be on there i, I can't i don't i don't know um I, I don't know because and that's not because i don't want to say yes it should or no it should it's just i don't know the criteria that the mods go by to, to, to approve runs for uh, speedrun.com or to approve leaderboards, I should say. Um, if they're going in like a more kid-friendly environment now that it's owned by another company and not just by PAC, uh, then I can see why they wouldn't want like a Let's Overdose on Drugs speedrun on there. Uh, and then like the purists will just say, well, it's just a game that you're trying to beat fast, so it should have a leaderboard. Point taken. That's a good point. And I think that's what speedrun.com started out as, but at the end of the day, you don't need a leaderboard on speedrun.com to just have a community. Um, yeah, there, there are, true. Yeah, there are games that don't have, like Skull, for speedrunning Skull, we had a community before we had a leaderboard. So uh, it, it's just one of those things. A leaderboard makes it a little bit easier to, especially on speedrun.com, to get people interested because it comes in on the main page when you're updating runs and, and that sort of thing. But I don't think it's a necessity. So I guess that's my non-answer to the question of should it be on there or not. Hmm. Like um, uh, like a substitute to um, games that people can't get on speedrun.com, especially if it's a more popular one, like Mr. Krabs Overdoses on Ketamine, people can like either, um, just like uh, with the Mario Kart the community did, they can create their own website and, like for boards and all, or they can create a Google form. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. A Google spreadsheet works as well. Um, there have been some communities that that have not had leaderboards for certain categories, and someone just throws up a, uh, a Google spreadsheet. Um, I know when I researched the Diddy Kong Racing video uh, that I did, the community had a, a list, like a, a spreadsheet of world records that did, predated speedrun.com. So there were runs on that on that uh, Google, Google document that had... Uh, that weren't on speedrun.com and it's, it's just it's one of those things that like if if the speedrun.com is not like it's not going to let you have a leaderboard then they're people are just going to make one even if it's not as publicly accessible as one that would be on uh, speedrun.com yeah and it's a little uh like a little off the subject of this speedrun topic uh, i think um i think the site mods for speedrun.com are very like very random or awkward with what uh, their terms of no notability is. Like, yeah. Like, I... Like, there's so many games that I've... Like, um... Some games I've, uh... Submitted in the past. And they did not accept it due to notability. But... Like, I actually like requested these same games again like because of like a couple years passing by and now all of a sudden they accept it which didn't make sense to me and the game yep. that i'm actually talking about is some flash games for the backyard again yeah no it, that's exactly it it's it's to define notoriety like there i wish that there was criteria that we could see so that like if they decline it we could then just say okay what can we work on to get it accepted instead of the response just being this this isn't a notable enough game it's like okay but what can we then do to make it more notable does a youtuber with a million subscribers have to make a video about it does someone with forty thousand viewers have to stream it uh what do we have to do um i mean a good example of this is uh like all these uh uh like all these like survival games that are getting like huge huge numbers on on youtube and getting big leaderboards uh like uh like, i guess minecraft at least survivor game uh subnautica like salvner has kept subnautica alive and relevant through sheer willpower so it's it's really interesting to like see these these survival games just sort of 
pop up because they're not known for being like a speed running game. So they're they're more known for like like Rust. People make stories about Rust. People don't speed run Rust, but I I promise you Rust has a leaderboard. If I if I type it into speedrun.com, uh, Rust. Oh my, maybe it doesn't have a leaderboard. When when I be, be about to eat my words here? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not seeing a leaderboard for for Rust. But maybe I'm. Uh, Mm, some good survival games I can think of. Yeah, some survival games I know don't exactly have, like, actual endings to them. Yeah. But I know people can actually come up with ideas to make, uh, in, like, I guess the best term for me to use is a notable category. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's a good way of putting it, because, like, like you said, a lot of survival games don't have an ending. Minecraft does. It's like, go kill the dragon. It's like, okay. Yeah. But that's not the point of Minecraft. The point of Minecraft is to build cool stuff. Uh, that's the point of Minecraft. Um, like you could see pictures of like people making sculptures of Doctor House in in uh, in Minecraft, or, or like remodeling Kokiri Forest from Ocarina of Time. Ocarina, sorry. I got a I got a lot of a few comments about saying Ocarina, <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll correct that now. Um, but yeah, I'm just looking up another survival game here. I like think... Ark Survival Evolved. And like Ark has a speedrun. Um, it's got a humongous leaderboard actually with lots of different categories. So there are, there are... Sorry. Hello Genesee. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, so there, there's tons of stuff. Um and like you can look at the rules for this and it just says complete the game as fast as possible by like defeating the final boss, just like Minecraft. So uh but like like you said, the, a lot of categories for things like survival games are arbitrary and you could even go further than that and say that a lot of categories for uh even main series games are arbitrary so once you get outside of any percent which is beat the game as fast as possible and 100 percent, which is beat the game as fast as possible and collect everything uh then you get into uh more like is this a category is this not a category like i guess the best example would, would have been like Super Mario Odyssey and it all captures uh, leaderboard. Um, that got deleted. Uh, um, and then there are other there are other things as well, like Darker Side, All Moons. Um, you know what? I think there's another survival game I can think of that might seem arbitrary, but can like have some good uh, like categories. Um, it's a game that my brother used to play a lot with his friend. Uh, I think it's called Don't Starve Together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's by uh, Clay Software. I, I'm aware of that game. Mm, the, like, don't that is just like a game. Re well, yeah, basically survive. I don't know if it has any like specific main goals. Cause I think there is one. There's like a bad guy. There's like a small story in in Don't Starve that that you can explore. Um, but I, I don't know much about it. I haven't played it in quite a few years now. But uh, it's uh, it is one of those cool ones where it's like I, I liked it. I like the fact that games invent categories that don't that like don't have a goal, and it's just so because people want to go fast and then, uh, and then like that's why you see all these other special categories is because people have made arbitrary goals and say, well, how fast can we achieve this arbitrary goal? Um, so like you can just look at the category extensions for Mario Odyssey, and there's a there's a ton of these here, um, like dog percent, softlock percent. I'm not saying they're bad <laughs> categories. I'm not saying they're bad categories. I'm just saying it's it's an arbitrary goal uh, that someone just said, well, how fast can we can we do this? Uh, yeah. And, and it's, just, it's gotten popular from there. Now, some things that are arbitrary are more popular than others. Um, and that's just, that's up to like the mods and the and even the viewers of like how popular this would get. So, uh, all right, that's, that's all I want to say about that. Yeah. Um, to, to viewers in my chat, I'm just going to let y'all know uh, we came up with a list of things to talk about. Um, you may uh, like see us get off topic of these ones that we're going to talk about, like and talk about some other things. Yeah, it's going to be a little back and forth with many subjects that we can think of. Okay, uh, we talked about the Mr. Krabs thing. Uh, you want to talk about one of yours real quick? Um, well, let's talk about this one, just since I just made the video on it. Um, okay. let's talk about, let's talk about, uh, does Ace belong in, in any percent? Uh, so, for anyone that doesn't know, what is Ace? 
ACE stands for Arbitrary Code Execution. Uh, and what it is, is it's when there's an exploit in a game that allows you to write your own code. So uh, I could explain this in very technical detail, but I won't do that. I'll save you guys the boring aspects of it. Uh, essentially what it's doing is it's it's letting you edit edit code and create your own code in the game and then execute that code uh, through some glitch. Um, it varies in every game what glitch allows you to execute the code you've written and the method of writing that code is different in every game. Uh, but it, under the hood, it's the same, it's the same sort of thing. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it, you're just, you're writing code, you're arbitrary code. You're writing arbitrary code, except when you know what you're doing, the code becomes not so arbitrary. So you see this, uh, I guess the famous example, is Super Mario World. That's the one that got, uh, biggest, fastest. And that, that was Seth Bling that figured that out. Uh, if you put items in certain spots and move the camera in a certain way and then do some certain actions... Uh, the game will just warp you to the credits. So that's arbitrary code being used to, like, in most, pretty much 99% of cases, it's going to be used to warp to the credits. Now, my question is, does this belong in any percent? And I, I, I think that under no circumstances should this be added to any percent. Uh, because it's a different, it is a different goal than, than a classic any percent uh, category in that, in let we'll just we'll use the Super Mario example. In the classic Mario example, the any percent category, which is now called twelve exit or eleven exit, uh, you had to actually play the game, get through the minimum number of exits, without using. And I'll, I'll define glitches and ace uh, in a second, uh, without really using any 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 glitches that are like ace to do it. So you have to go through a minimum of eleven levels. So you're still playing the game, and you're using some exploits along the way. With ace. You're not playing the game anymore. You're trying to interact with the compiler in a way that exploits something. It, it really, really, you're exploiting the way the hardware, the software is running on instead of exploiting the software itself um, because you're actually editing the software. So it's not like it's not like a glitch that like a developer, oh, you can clip through this wall. That's the developer's fault. This isn't always the developer's fault. This is just something that you can you can find in a lot of different the more complex something gets the easier it is going to be to do ASIN, especially these older games um for more technical reasons i won't get into uh so i think that for that reason this it a should always be its own category it it, it causes humongous problems in communities when they try and put it in any percent i mean tours stopped running ocarina of time there i said it again ocarina of time uh <laughs> Because uh, because they put Ace in any percent. I know he's back to running it now, but for a while he did not run it, and that was why. Uh, it's it's such a different way of playing the game that it's not like doing a wrong warp. It's 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 doing a specific things. How do I want to explain this? Because I'm getting into nitty gritty territory. You're doing something. You're not really like I said. You're not you're not exploiting the software. You're exploiting the hardware at that point. Uh, and sure, you're using the software to do that, but any semblance of playing the game is out the window. You're, you're using the turn, you're using the game as a tool to write code instead of having it open in Microsoft Visual Studio. You, you have it open in the game. It's very cool. I love Ace. I think it's fantastic. I think it's phenomenal. The people that research it do outstanding work. I just don't think it should be in any percent. That's my only thing. Make another category for it. Um, the paper, like I, I just made the Paper Mario Ace History video that released today, and the Paper Mario community decided that this doesn't belong at any percent. If if it's popular enough, we'll make a separate category for it because uh, it, it's got the cool factor. Like, it's really cool to watch this happen. It's really cool to see the work that goes into doing it. It's just not like it's not any percent in like the spirit of any percent. Hmm. A few comments I'd like to say about that. Also, um, it's. Like, using Ace can't really be... Is it really... Does it really sound like a consistent thing? Because it sounds like they can use Ace to do... Or to change up the game in many different ways. Like you told me in Discord chat earlier, people can, like, rewrite or make their own codes to, like, m cause glitches that would never usually occur. Or, like, for example, like... I said this earlier too in Discord. 
you can like have some kind of menu at the start of the game, like selected items you would usually have to unlock. Like someone could do that in a run, or maybe in another run, someone could make it to where. Hmm. This is probably a stupid thing to say. Like, I guess you could say double jumping or like levitating through areas. Yeah. Or also yeah. just skipping chapters in total. It's not yeah, exactly you a can make it, thing. You can make it do anything you want. I mean, people have created Pong inside of Super Mario World. They've, they've recreated Flappy Bird inside of Super Mario World using Ace. It's it's once you have it, it's it's almost unlimited as to what you can do with it. Um, there are some limitations because you only have a, a finite amount of memory to do things in. So you're not going to make like a Nintendo 64 game on a Super Nintendo game. But uh, you what you can do is like you could if you knew what you were doing you could probably like create like the metroid sprites in super mario world so uh it's 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 one of those things where like you can do a lot of cool stuff with it uh should that stuff be um allowed any percent i say no yeah um my friend lane in chat agrees also and yeah i definitely agree big time as well because like other than the information we gave, uh, it would just cause so much confusion in the community with any percent as well. And I, it would probably cause a lot of drama about what can be done, like which codes can be done and all. And it will probably be hard to detect what codes were changed or used. Just make it its own category and everything. everyone should be happy. Um, any percent gets to stay how it is, only using glitches that were in the game itself, not not hardware exploits. Um, it's not even really a hardware exploit. It's 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 really hard to like define what Ace is in the context of speed running. But uh, that's all I really want to say about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, which one should I talk about next? Hmm. Okay. Now, like in a way, I know that like almost all games out there can be sped run. But there are some games that technically can't. And, excuse me, now I'd like to discuss some games that, like, exact can't really be sped run. Like, can you think of any games? I, I, don't, know en I don't know enough about this game to concretely say you can't speed run it, but I'd say Desert Bus is probably on that list somewhere. I was just or, about to say that one. <laughs> or it's near, because if you, if you play optimally, you get the same time as anyone else will get. And playing optimally just means sitting there for eight hours and not letting the bus go off the road. Yeah, and also, um, it's like go you're going the same speed and, like, the same forward momentum, like, the whole time, even when you're turning, like, like onto the road, off to the side. Yeah, there's no, there's no tech or strats to it. It's just... It's just pay attention. And, <laughs> like, I've made a, a video titled speedruns that don't make sense and um and technicalities i say you can't speedrun visual novels which people have done like i've seen people tiling videos like speedrunning like visual novels and my thoughts on that is that's not really speedrunning you're just like skipping all the text it's just nothing but text and like yeah, there are some interactions in them, like clicking on text boxes, making decisions, but that doesn't really count as speedrunning, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't... The visual novel is an interesting question, because they're not really games. They're more of, like, choose-your-own-adventures books. Um, it's like those dating sims that were always super popular in the early 2000s. It's like, you don't, you don't really... There's no tech. Again, there's no tech. It's just click a button or press enter. Uh, it, it's just to me, it's not interesting. Maybe someone has an argument for why it could be a speed run. I'd like to hear it, uh, but it's it's there's no there's, there's nothing interesting about it to me. So yeah, by the way, a little off a little off topic here. I was thinking of doing a speed run of a random visual novel from from Steve just as a joke. Yeah, sure. Like, no, you. It, it, it like it. This sort of gets at the question of like, what is a speed run? Like, some people have the opinion that as long as you have a timer going, it's a speed run. Um, 
I don't subscribe to that. That sort of uh, uh, I don't subscribe to that opinion. Uh, if I'm doing a casual playthrough of something and I have a timer up, I don't I don't think that that's a, a speed run. Uh, I think it's like might be a starting point to do speed runs. But if I'm not learning any of the strats and I'm not uh, putting effort in to go fast, I don't I don't see why it should be called a speed run. Um, yeah. Like it doesn't bother me that that some that, that these are on leaderboards. It's like it's like whatever. Like it, it, at the end of the day, we're 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 playing games fast. Um, people generally only care at the top ten runs. Uh, that's from a casual point of view. So I don't I don't see any harm in having these on the leaderboards. People say like, oh well, leaderboard integrity. It's like, yeah, but we're not. It, this isn't professional sports. <laughs> so let's just chill out for a second. Um, but I, but at the same time, I don't, I don't think just having a timer up on your casual runs a speed run. Yeah. Um. Okay. Now one. Now this would probably be an interesting one. Like. Like. Um. Time goals for certain games. Like I know that I know, uh, the Super Mario Bros. speedrun community is definitely going large for like. A possible upcoming 454. Yep. When, like, oh my god, I want to talk about Miniland for for a sec. Like, he was just a speedrunner that just came into the community out of nowhere, playing, like, Super Mario Bros. very, very well. And he, like, broke the record, like, in terms of Super Mario Bros. quite a bit. Like, was it, like, 300 milliseconds that he beat it by it was a lot he 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 was an upper comer up and comer that got that got very good very fast um i think that game i'm interested as to what happens to that game after the task is tied uh because i suspect that once that happens maybe two people have to tie the task i suspect that once that happens uh there will be people pushing to allow right plus plus uh right plus left inputs on a controller um just in the name of going faster and being able to lower the record again uh i suspect that will be the case now there are communities that already allow left right inputs at the same time super mario kart is one of them uh that was tech that they discovered uh i think it was kdd that discovered that that if you have a that you can just, it made it it might have been uh kart 7 i'm not 100 percent sure um but and maybe i've got got that attribution just wrong completely so it's apologies but uh if you take the rubber out of your controller and you can press on the d-pad in every direction at the same time you can actually go faster by doing these special strategies and special turns so and they allowed it just because that can happen to, to a controller over time uh the, the rubber just wears out and then you're able to hit those directions at the same time uh and i i think i strongly suspect that once super mario bros uh hits the uh the tied task i think you're going to see a push for that to happen or a category will be made for that um and it will become the more popular version just because people want to see the game pushed faster that's what speedrunners do it's like we we, we attain we break barriers and, and bring things lower we, we don't leave stuff solved at task perfect and super possible in super popular games we always try to do something else yeah um i mean i just had something in mind Frame rule, if I recall, is what it calls when you're saving frames, right? Yeah, so the, the classic example Darbian uses is there's a bus. And the bus leaves every, I think, 21 frames, something like that. And if it doesn't matter if you get there on frame 1 or frame 19, you don't get to leave the screen until uh, frame 21. So, and then, uh, then once it hits frame 21, it starts that counter over again. So it, you have to save in order to go faster in Super Mario Bros. You have to be able to save a full 21 frames uh, before you can uh, before your time save will 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 matter enough to to save time. Other than uh, like the 454 like goal oh, people are trying to get Super Mario Bros. What other games can you think of that has some kind of crazy time goal that people are trying to achieve? Well. Uh, Super Mario 64 has went crazy in the last year. Um, we've had several, I shouldn't say several, three or four, 138. Um, it's, it seems like they all hit it at once. I'll just pull that up really quick. 
uh, what the uh, the number of people that have that is. But I know Cheese has one. He's got a 138. Yep. Cheese got a 138.25. Simply the 138.28. Funcation has the uh, 138.32. Batora, Liam, and so six people. I, I was almost right when I said several. <laughs> six people uh, have the uh, the 138. Tago and Paracuda just both tied here in seventh place, just five seconds off of it. So it's very, very possible we'll see the top 10 all have 138 sometime this year for uh super mario 64 and i think they're gonna go for the 137 like that's not that's not out of the question uh that that time is attainable it's not out of the question so we'll uh we'll see what happens there it's uh it's interesting um another game celeste is getting like solved almost like they're getting they're getting really close to being having like a solved game uh, then obviously there are strats that the task uses they can't use uh, but uh, they're down like the 26s now or 27s I've got, I'm just it's loading up here uh, yeah they have 26 29 so two people have 26s in the game TGH is just a second and a half or two and a half seconds off of it so the 26s are uh, uh, are possible I don't know what the like best time for Celeste to be but they're getting to the point where it's it's going to be really really hard to squeeze out any more time because not much changes in that run. It's all, it's just all execution. There's no there's no RNG. It's just it's all execution and it's uh, it's it's one of those runs. I like I think for that reason, and this is this is getting a little bit away from the topic, but I find after like a year, it's really boring to watch execution heavy runs. I would like to see some RNG because it gives me that edge of the seat moment of like what's going to happen what's he going to have to deal with uh what's the runner going to have to do to to get through this one um how do they adapt to the situation whereas in celeste it's like only your mistakes that's all you're you're fighting against is your mistakes uh in a game like celeste so hmm. you know what i believe that do you think that star fox 64 runners are trying to break the 22 minute mark I don't follow that game enough. I've, I have watched like a GDQ run of it, and that's about all I've watched of, of Star Fox. Um, I know it's very interesting for a game that's essentially an auto scroller because there's a lot of different strategies to save time and to go faster in it. So it is a very interesting run uh, it, for those reasons. But I don't know enough about it to uh, to to comment on that. Hmm. And that, like, not the topic, not one of the topics I have, but. Speed running like auto scroller type games. What are your thoughts on that? It depends on the uh, like. It depends on the type of auto scroller that it is. Um, something like all the auto scrollers in Yoshi's Island, everyone's gonna have the same gold splits because there's no way to go faster in them. Uh, yeah. It's just the camera scrolls at the at the rate it scrolls. Whereas like Star Fox, it's like. Oh, there, there is stuff we can do to affect like how fast the camera yeah, scrolls. Yeah, we can keep on using the boosts to go further ahead. Yep. It's not like it's an auto scroll that just moves itself on its own. The screen yep. moves along with you too. Yep, but uh, and like lag reduction strats, that sort of thing. What enemies you kill, when you kill them. It's, it's quite the interesting. Uh, excuse me. It's quite the interesting uh, speedrun in that regard. So, like, if it's a pure auto scroller where it's just like don't die and you're gonna get a gold split every time then like it's, it's the same thing as desert bus um now like obviously there are probably auto scrollers that are like a bullet hell auto scroller it's probably a lot more difficult to just not die in so that probably has some uh some uh legitimacy as a speed run but there's gotta be some kind of challenge to it uh like this would probably be like interesting interesting since uh easy scapes done a couple of videos on it like meme mm -hmm. speed games like yeah. are there any good meme speedrun games we could talk about probably but i don't follow that scene too much uh my interest in speedrunning change day to day uh as as i find and learn new things that different communities are doing uh, the meme speedruns, I'm not, I don't pay too much attention to those, so, uh, 
I don't even know what the last one I would have watched would be. I maybe watched like 20 seconds of a American Dad speed run once. Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah, but that that's it. I, 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 the the speedrun stuff, I, I hang out a lot in like a Link to the Past streams, Mario Kart 64, that kind of stuff. Um, just games I grew up with, games I like, uh, I'd still like seeing. So uh, I don't have much more to say. There's some games I know that are very interesting mean games. Uh, I don't know if you've seen them yet, but uh, the first-person shooter uh, versions of Super Mario 64, have you seen those? I haven't. Man. <laughs> Easy Speezy ha uh, did a speedrun of that, uh, too. Like, it's a good meme version of the game. Uh, it's a bit strange, I'll admit. Like, turning a platformer like into a first-person shooter. Like, that was definitely one interesting meme. I thought we would get more out of that one, and I apologize. No, sorry, I just it's just not something I follow too much. It's cool. Uh, what was the second thing you had on yours? Uh, so we looked at Ace on any percent, and I'm looking through our comments now. Oh, should offline runs be counted on leaderboards? Okay, then. Sometimes offline runs I know are definitely like subjective to being suspicious since people mm -hmm. aren't actually seeing you doing the runs and all. And also people are more than likely to edit them in a way since no one's able to see what they're doing. Yeah, it's uh well, it, it it does open up like people should be more suspicious of offline runs. Uh but I don't think that you can just say they're all cheated just for the fact that they're offline. Uh, a lot of the early runs and early speed running from the early, like early 2000s to about right around 2010 when streaming became a thing. A lot of those were offline runs and they weren't done live because there was nowhere to do them live. Uh, but as the community evolved, things changed and more proof requirements became a bit more uh, tighter. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like... Uh, I can, I can, I, I don't think they should be banned, but maybe proof requirements around them should be a little bit more stringent. That's all. Um, sometimes even like speedruns on uh, live can get a bit suspicious because I remember, I, I remember seeing some cheater speed running videos. Uh, some guy who was speed running us, uh, uh, Yoshi's Island. Um, like. Uh, I think it was Trihex. He like even Trihex watched this guy for a while, and then he decided to do a hand cam and like he did the wrong inputs. He was actually like trying to copy a task. Lee SDA is who you're thinking of. Yeah. Like, which I never understood why people even did that. Well, like he, his efforts to cheat to cover up his cheating are ultimately what got him caught. Um, the hand cam was a dead giveaway once it was analyzed that like the inputs did not match up with what was happening on screen uh, so it was more of those things like he had the audacity to do that and got caught so um, yeah I don't know even before he used the hand cam it was uh, I, like during the first time he the first time he did that live and had commentators I think it was Carl Sagan was like this is he, he tried to proof call him in the run and nothing happened but like the alarm bells were already going off at that point that this was that something was up with this run when he wouldn't when we wouldn't do the proof calls so mm, about, what other things can we talk about with like speed running offline now I know lots of people well, don't exactly it, have the means to do that like to you, speed run you, online yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, like, back in the day, if you want to talk about, like, offline speedrunning, there was, uh, uh, people would mail videotapes back and forth. Um, the GoldenEye community, especially, GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, Super Mario Kart, Mario Kart 64, the earliest speedrunning communities that, that we have, they would, they would take VHS, VH, VSH, VHS <laughs> tapes, uh, of, of their runs and mail them to a mod for proof. Um... You, you can talk to, like, old members of the community that are still around from those days that might even still have those tapes or even Polaroid pictures 
Uh, Polaroid pictures were another one. Like people would just snap a picture, stick it in an envelope, and mail it off to uh, to whoever was um, whoever was the mod. Uh, I, I've had a few people that have that have talked to me uh, when they were consulting on videos that I've made, saying that like, yeah, this is how we did it back then. Uh, we just mail pictures to each other as proof because all they really had was uh, for online forums, like very early online forums. You can imagine what they looked like in 1998 and 1996. Uh, the internet was very young. It, yeah. it wasn't like a, the websites were not impressive. And it was just people posting their times, trying to like hang out and, and, and talk with each other. Um, and it, even before that, like the earliest records I ever researched were from magazines. Uh, there was a Japanese magazine that, and I don't know how you would even like prove these times to the people editing the magazine. Um, you, you, you must have, I assume there was like, send us a picture with your time, but uh, you had these early times from F-Zero was, is a great example because you can still see uh, the magazine from for F-Zero in Japan has been preserved. You can still see it online. So you can see these times, uh, which is really cool. Um, and they're all from like 1991. And the cool thing about that is some of these times you, you have to believe that they were they were done because they went on to be beaten. Sometimes that were submitted to Nintendo Power on our side of the pond, uh, like for Diddy Kong Racing, those a lot of those times in Nintendo Power were fake because they're they're just not attainable. You you could you could tass it and you still wouldn't get as fast as the times as were claimed in Nintendo Power for some of these some of these tracks. So uh, but like the F Zero stuff especially the times done by legend legend still runs the game um he's beaten his times that he submitted to the magazines over and over through the years so it's one of those things it's like uh uh you, you kind of have to give some legitimacy to these times despite the fact that they don't have like video proof anymore or or ever had video proof for that matter and like with that comment that made me think of what are your thoughts on people uploading vid, uh, like, or posting, I'm sorry, submitting, like, runs without video proof? Um, it depends on the leaderboard. Like, obviously, I don't, I don't want to see, uh, even, I, like, for, let's see, Super Mario Bros. I don't want to see any run in the top 100 of a game that popular that doesn't have video. Um, like, it, it, there comes a point... Once a game reaches a certain level of popularity or reverence in the community, or once a game has enough runners, uh, you, you got to have video for for like the top, at least the top ten. Uh, like someone submitting a time, like it's like time trials for Mario Kart. Um, I don't, I'm not 100% sure if you 100% need requirement for video, like video for submission for time trials. But at a certain point, I think it's it's required that once you've broken a certain threshold, you have to have video proof for this stuff. Uh, just because they don't want people, it's a bad thing for someone to claim a world record that has no video proof. Um, the biggest, like, here's a great example. Super Mario Kart, um, Ghost Valley 1. KVD had the record in that since like 2005, no video proof. Uh, no one did de debated that he didn't drive the time everyone accepted that he drove the time no video proof uh until i think it was 2020 or 2019 where he finally beat the time after like 14 years he beat his time trial time on that and the the only world record in super mario kart that didn't have video proof finally had video proof uh so it's one of those things like if the community is tight enough you can operate in a way that doesn't have video proof for everything up to a certain point uh, in today's day and age, everything, everything should have video proof. Um, even if, even, off, especially an offline run, uh, yeah. especially an offline run. Well, it's like <laughs> Liam's, when Liam got the world record in Super Mario 64, it was like his internet was so bad. It was just a jumbled mess of pixels on the screen. <laughs> so everyone's like, does this count as world record? What's going on? But like, luckily he had the local recording, so everything was fine, but. It's like everyone watched him do that time. It's just no one could see what the heck he was doing. So, you know what? I've actually seen some, like quite a few leaderboards. Like they're not exactly popular, and they're not exactly, um, like active either. But in Fantasy Star Universe, I saw 
like someone with uh, like very impressive time on that one and they're they were actually the only one with the run but but what was it that they did what is it that they did that saved so much time like one th one reason why people should have uh, footage of their speed runs whether it's an active game or not because sometimes even these people could have done strats that the world record holder like didn't know about yes agreed 100 percent, especially for world record speedruns or world record breaking speedruns there should be video proof for that in, in every case because you don't know like you don't want a situation where it turns out the person lied and they didn't actually do the time uh you don't want that and fancy star is a good example because uh that they actually had a splicer who was like a runner good enough to actually get world records, but he decided to splice like three different games in the series to get world records in the span of like a week. Uh, I'm not going to name him because he, he likes to DMCA people as he did to me. Um, but it did happen. Uh, and it was like proven, and he admitted that it was, they were after it was proven, he finally admitted it was DMCA after he doubled down and doubled down uh, two or three times. He finally caved and said, that, yeah, it was, uh, it, it, they were spliced. So, um, but yeah, so, uh, video proof for sure. And even, even then video proof isn't always enough because there have been splices that have lived on for years that people didn't, uh, know about like, holy moly. The only reason he got caught splicing super Mario 64 was because he, was, he decided to go. He, yeah. 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 yeah he exactly. Was going around uh, comment sections bragging about his time. Yeah, and then when Gothic Logic actually looked at the time, it's like, oh, this video has like clear splices in it. So it's like, yeah, your your record from like two thousand and four, it doesn't it's not a record anymore. Bye bye. So And that definitely brought me up on another subject. Why do people cheat in speedrunning? Why do people cheat in anything? It's like cheating in golf. You're only really like hurting yourself. <clears throat> um like you're lying to yourself, you're lying to other people. It's like it's you, you distorting the truth. It's, like it's just, it's, it's not good. Like I, I maybe people think they're gonna get like famous off of getting like these world records, but there are very few games in this in this hobby that will get you a lot of notoriety and like Twitch subscribers because you got world record in them. There's a lot more to like being successful than just getting world records. So like there's lots of reasons I can see people cheating. One, yeah, they want the popularity. Or two, like they're getting tired of not being able to achieve like a, new, a better time. Uh, three is like I think this is another good reason. Um, okay, I just had it when he left. <laughs> but, uh, but another thing I think I could talk about this is um, speed running, like cheating and speed running will never bring you the satisfaction that you truly want. Like, well, it's like that guy that, like, the biggest, like, cheating scandal, quote-unquote, after the dream situation was that guy that, like, blindfold run, ran Super Mario 64. Oh, yeah, him. Was, like, obvious that he wasn't running it. I mean, it's like, what... For one, if you're going to cheat at a game like Super Mario 64, you better know what the hell you're doing, because you're going to get caught. Um, the mods there are too good... Uh, to let like lazy attempts get through, and even non-lazy attempts, it's like they're gonna get you. Uh, they, it's like first submitted run, top ten on the leaderboard. It's like that's gonna raise some eyebrows. Um, so it's it's like one of those things. It's like for one, there's no point in doing it. Uh, you, you're gonna get found out eventually, and like cheating and speed running just like brings you hate in the community. And causes yeah, that's, that's a the lot other of thing. suspicion, like for other communities. Once you've been labeled a cheater, it's hard to like break that that stigma to get to get that like label off of you. So and... it, it's one of the things like you better be prepared to leave if if you're uh, if you're gonna get to go do this. Yeah, and I ask myself this question all the time: like, where is the feeling of accomplishment if you're cheating? Like, you're not gonna get the like accomplishment like that happy feeling you would get like being your best time if you cheated yep well it's like the, i think one of the like, mentalities that cheaters will have is like i'm good enough at this game i don't want to grind the rng i just deserve this time so i'll just cheat to get it now 
I think it's a different story if you make it plainly obvious that you're cheating and also it's just as a joke. Like, uh, like that Celeste run? Yeah, uh, also Celeste, you said? There was a Celeste run where the guy had no in-game audio and he just played like this really obnoxious soundtrack over it. I think I saw that in time. a Celeste video one time. Yeah, and he was found out quite... I think he, he Yeah, he was found out and then... Uh, admitted that, like, this is fake. But somehow it got verified on the leaderboard. It was a really weird situation. <laughs> like, one example I can give, like, as fake, um, and making it plainly obvious, uh, that it is fake, is, like, I did a comedy video once where I pretended to steal Cosmic's world record speed on Super Mario Bros. and claimed it. But I even said it in the video description, and... Like, yeah, and I even, like, talked to Cosmic about it, that it was all fake, that it was just for comedy. Mm-hmm. Okay, then. Oh, another good, uh, like, another funny thing about a cheating and speedrunning that, um, that definitely went on for years, or this guy never mentioned anything, like, for years, is Bada Boom. You remember that situation? Yeah, but that, <laughs> that video was, like, it was blatantly fake from the get-go. For one, he'd never he'd never been on the leaderboard ever. Um, two, he used like the footage changed quality during the run because it was like three different runs all cut up. So it's just I don't know what the hell he was doing. And another <laughs> obvious thing is that his heart rate stayed at a steady 84, 89. Everything about that video was bad. <laughs> If that became a funny meme, everyone just pretending, like, to do the same thing Bada Boom did. Yep. Okay, back to my list. Not trying to sound rude when I say that. No, no, it's all good. Okay, like, tasks. I know sometimes tasks can actually help people, like, come up with new strats. Like, in the tasks for Mario Kart 64, I know sometimes they made the tasks... Like, cause people to, like, to jump up on other, like, play on, like, on the other AI to get, like, high air, like, to skip whole mm -hmm. laps. Because of that, I know it gave Mario Kart 64, uh, players the thought of doing that, like, to the AI at the beginning of Rainbow Road. <clears throat> like, what other, what other good examples? I watched some tasks, but not a lot. What's the question? Like... Tasses that just like tasses in general, like that's helped people come up with strats. Oh, I, I gotta pass on this one. I don't know. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> like that yeah. was actually. It's a good, good question. Yeah, it yeah. was a good example though with the Mario yeah. Kart one. It's a good question, but I don't know. Uh, I, I'd have. That's what I'd have to research to to give some answers on. I don't know. And can you think of any impressive challenges that speedrunners have, like, attempted or completed? Uh, number one, High Spirit's full, uh, series run of Dragon Quest. It took him, like, 86 or 7 hours. They seriously um, did that? Yeah, he did that. Holy it God. was, uh, it was, it was something. I don't ever want to see it done again, because he was in hard shape <laughs> when he was done, but... He tried to speak when it was over. He he was so he was so exhausted that he couldn't even speak. He had to go like have some water and a coffee before he could even address his chat. It was yeah. Don't don't do these long marathon runs, guys. They're they're not worth it. It's super impressive, but at the same time, it's like three and a half days no sleep. No thanks. A friend of mine, uh, like there's a friend of mine. Um, his name is Nixo N I X X O. He, uh, excuse me, he tried to do a 100% marathon of all mainstream Harry Potter games. Like, did 100% all the games. And I actually watched him, like, do that, and, like, it was quite impressive on how he was, like, how fast he was going through all that, like, and mm -hmm. while still getting 100% on each of the games. And, my gosh, I... I don't understand how people can even do, like, stuff like that. I actually tried to attempt a crazy challenge before. Um, 
this is probably gonna sound crazy and maybe stupid, but I wanted I tried to attempt to speedrun all the games on the Rare Replay disc. Yeah, you've mentioned that to me before. But the bad thing about that is make fun of me in chat if you guys want. I am so, so bad when it comes to those very old retro games. <laughs> those like the games on uh, the Rare Replay disc, like Battletoads, I couldn't even beat. I thought I would be able to, but they were much harder than I thought. Back when games were hard, that's right. I I have not attempted this yet, but I was originally thinking of trying another challenge where I at least speedrun all the 3D games on the Rare Replay. Do you think that would probably be an impressive challenge? People do that with a lot of stuff. I just, like, beat every, like, uh... Mario All-Stars is a good example. Mario 3D All-Stars, like, beat every game on that. Um, it, whether it's a good challenge or not, I mean, it, it would be a fun challenge, I'm sure, but would it be a successful challenge? Uh, if I knew that, I would have lots and lots of subscribers and viewers because that's the only thing I would be doing if I could predict what was going to be popular on the internet. Um, so it's one of those things. You more like you got to try it and do it if you're looking to see if, it will be, if people will like to do it. Um... A lot of it's just trial and error. The uh, the coolest like challenge runs I see in speedrunning are probably things like I don't know, like just any hundred percent really 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 cool to watch. Um, just because it's hundred percent, like the, the, the route's tighter. Uh, it's 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 got more variety in it, um, especially with RPGs like oh, yeah, uh, no Super Mario RPG doesn't even have there's no 100 percent category because you you literally can't get 100 percent of the items in the run uh because you're forced to pick between two different items at one point in the game and you can never get the other one uh once you choose so yeah and i think speed running uh rpgs no 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 well i guess depending on the rpg and uh jrpgs is an impressive feat in general because like, I always thought it was super impressive how players can go through, like, far parts in the game at such a low level. Yep. Yep. Mario RPG, great example of that. Uh, Final Fantasy, great example of that. The, the strategy for most RPGs is just get to the bare minimum level where you can beat the boss and move on. That and also finding the items that, like, gives you yep. crazy strength. Yep. Items are a big part of a lot of RPG runs, uh, definitely. Um, you're, you're not you're not getting world record in Super Mario RPG without uh, without having uh, freebies. Like there's a mechanic in that game where when you use an item, there's a percentage of a chance that it will uh, go back to your inventory. You're not you're not getting world record in that game without getting a certain number of those. So, um, I this is a topic I just thought of: glitch runs versus glitchless runs. I know there's definitely always. I know there's always been, like, controversy on whether glitches should be allowed in games or not. 100% they should be allowed, and if people want to run glitchless runs, then a new category on the leaderboard, problem solved. Man, lots of casual gamers I know are, well, some speedrunners, I'll just say both of them in general. You like, see it all the time, you see, I know what you're going to say, and you see it all the time in comment sections, it's like, this isn't a speedrun, he's doing this, which isn't what the developers intended. With like, you get that from people that have never speed ran, don't watch speed runs, just see the video and then decide that their opinions were were stating. Exactly. So um, if it like, some people like think it's cheating because I feel like they can't personally do it themselves. Just because people use glitches and speed runs doesn't mean it's easier. And the, and also it doesn't mean it's cheating if it's part of a, if it's at part of the category. Right, yeah, no. And, like, sometimes glitches go too far away from the spirit of that category, and they have to make rulings on it. Um, or make like, it a whole new category. Just like exactly. The, just like the credits warp is for Mario World. Yep, exactly. 100%. So, uh, a lot of those comments saying they're cheating, they just, they don't know speedrunning. They just, they they know, like, oh, just beat games as fast as we can. That's all they know about it, because they they're not part of the communities, they don't really watch it. I'm not... I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm just saying that, like, their opinions are not... They're not informed, so... Yeah. Just, you can't let that stuff bother you when you see it. Okay. Is there anything else you can think of we could talk about? I think I'm all talked out for the night. My voice is getting a little bit dry, and uh, I gotta cook some dinner, so... 
<sighs> I'm I sorry I didn't think up a lot of very big topics. We went for an hour. I think this was really great. I'll upload this uh, to my YouTube channel for like past the ref like for future references. We can use it as like future topics if we ever do one again like this. Yep. All right. Yeah, I guess that's gonna be it for this podcast. But I'm not exactly gonna be finished streaming just yet though. But I appreciate you uh, doing this uh, with me, Abasoft. Not a problem, Patrick. Uh, I love talking speedrunning stuff, so uh, it was it was fun to do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was it was very fun, dude. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye, man.